This is Tina Douglas, and you're listening to the Liam Photography Podcast with your host, my husband, Liam Douglas. Enjoy! Greetings, everybody. You're listening to the Liam Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Liam Douglas, and this is episode 276 for September 29th, 2022. So in today's episode, I wanted to share some ways that you can save money on photo gear, especially if you're a student or hobbyist. But first, I wanted to share an update on Tina's treatment, since some of you have been kind enough to send well wishes and prayers her way. Now, Tina went back into the hospital yesterday for a two-day stay to start her second four-week round of chemotherapy, and she's scheduled to be released on Friday afternoon to finish that four weeks of treatment at home. The nurse that works for her oncologist said that this will be the last time she has to restart her treatment in the hospital. The other remaining four times, she will be able to start from home which is a load off our minds, especially Tina's, because she hates being in the hospital, and I don't blame her. I've never cared for being in the hospital myself. Now, she has been doing very well so far on the treatments, and they are optimistic that she will make a full recovery. So I wanted to thank you once again for your well wishes and your prayers for her and that she has a speedy and full recovery. Thank you very much once again. All right, so on to today's topic, areas where you can save some money in photo gear. And the first one I wanted to talk about is batteries. Now, batteries for your camera system are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, with many of the ones that are sold by our camera makers costing upwards of $100 each or more, depending on your camera body and model. Now, the good news is there are some third-party battery makers that are very reputable and that I can recommend to help save you some money in this area. Now, just to be clear, I am not telling you to not buy your camera maker's batteries, nor am I taking any responsibility for any issues that happen from not using your camera maker's batteries. I am simply sharing information on some of the third-party battery makers that I have personally used and have never had any issues with at all. Now, the first of these is a company called Wasabi Power. And yes, their name sounds and is spelled just like the hot Japanese condiment that you can use on your sushi that is green in color. Now, Wasabi Power has been selling batteries for pretty much any camera on the market for quite a few years now, and you can find them on Amazon. They will frequently sell you two batteries and a spare charger from anywhere from $20 on up, depending on the camera, make, and model. Now, Wasabi Power batteries are made by a company called Blue Nook, and they've been making batteries since 2001, so they've been doing it for 21 years now. And if you visit their official website at wasabipower.com, you will see they offer batteries for GoPro, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fujifilm, and Panasonic. And their batteries look very much like the original OEM batteries, only with the Wasabi Power name stamped on them. Now, in addition to Amazon, Wasabi Power batteries are also sold on eBay and in Walmart stores, and I've even seen them in Best Buy. So they're a fairly large battery maker with their products most everywhere, and they're also stocked in many camera stores and shops around the world. Now, I've been personally using Wasabi Power batteries in all my Canon and now Fujifilm cameras since 2010, and I've never had any issues at all with their batteries or with any performance issues. On some of my camera models, I actually got more shooting time and more frames per charge than I did with my OEM Canon batteries. That's no lie. I'm being totally straight with you on that. I was very impressed with myself. Now, all of Wasabi Power's batteries have a 30-day return policy, a 90-day replacement policy, and a three-year warranty period. 
And as I said before, I've never had to have one replaced in 12 years of using them in my cameras. They are headquartered here in the U.S. in Pomona, California, with both local and a toll-free number, so you can get in touch with them. Now, I personally know a lot of photographers who use and recommend their batteries as an alternative to the original OEM batteries made by your camera maker. And I've not found anyone in 12 years that has had anything bad to say about Wasabi Power's brand of batteries. So, take that as you will. So far, is in my experience and the experience of a lot of my friends that shoot and other photographers that I've met through various online forums, Wasabi Power seems to have a very stellar reputation for making quality third-party batteries. Now, the second brand of third-party batteries that I have had a lot of success with is Big Mike's. And you can find their website at bigmikeselectronics.com. Now, Big Mike's also sells on Amazon and uh, on their own site as well. And I've used their batteries in some of my Canon cameras, but not in Fujifilm because I believe they only make batteries for the big three, Canon, Nikon, and Sony. They don't make them for Panasonic or Fujifilm or Pentax or any of the other brands. Now, the only odd thing that I've noticed about Big Mike's batteries is that even though their chargers look similar to the OEM Canon ones, they only seem to charge their batteries, their own batteries, well. Now, what I mean by this is you can charge the Big Mike's batteries in your OEM Canon charger, but when the light goes out saying the battery is at 100% and you put it in your camera and power it on, the camera will show it's only at about 60 to 70%. Now, if you take the battery back out and put it in Big Mike's charger, it will get to 100%, no problem. But there is something odd going on with their chargers, for sure. Now, I've noticed the same in reverse. So, if I put my Canon batteries in the Big Mike's charger, it would charge them. But again, would say they were at 100% when they were only at 60 to 70%. So, just keep that in mind. Only charge Big Mike's batteries in their own charger and keep your Canon batteries in the Canon charger to be sure you're going to get 100% charge out of each type of battery. Now, Big Mike's batteries can also be as inexpensive as Wasabi Power, but not always. I've had some Canon cameras where I could get two Big Mike's batteries in a charger for 20 bucks, but other models cost quite a bit more. Not substantially more, but more than the $20. And they're not always $20 for a pair of batteries in charge of Wasabi Power either. It does vary from camera body to camera body a little bit, but that can be expected. So, I have no issues with Big Mike's batteries, and I've used theirs for around 10 years now as well. So I definitely am not going to say anything bad about them. I've had no bad experiences. Now, I will say I haven't noticed any additional shooting time or, or frames per charge like I have with some of the Wasabi Power batteries. But the Big Mike's batteries do last at least as long as the OEM Canon ones will. I've had some people on some forums claim that, you know, I bought these third party batteries but they don't last as long as my canon or nikon batteries you know they die faster i don't get as many frames per charge as i do with the oem batteries and that's probably true but i can tell you with my experience with big bikes i always got the same number of frames per charge as i did with the oem canon batteries and on some of the wasabi power batteries i would actually get more frames per charge so that's it to me that's extremely impressive and that's why i'm sharing these two makers with you today that and the fact that i have personal experience with both of them now i'm going to take a break right here and then i'll be right back We hope you're enjoying this edition of the Liam Photography Podcast. The best way to support the show is to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else that you get your podcasts. If you want to leave comments or suggestions for future episodes, you can call or text the show at area code 470-294-8191. And you can email the show at liam at liamphotographypodcast.com. You can find the show notes and links at liamphotographypodcast.com. And you can tweet the show at liamphotoatl using the hashtag liamphotopodcast. And now, back to the show. 
and we're back. Okay, so now there is a third third party ban- battery manufacturer that I wanted to tell you about. Now, this one I have not used myself, but they do have a stellar reputation. And this company is called Nightcore, N I T E C O R E. And you can find their website in the show notes for this episode, along with the other companies. Now, they're making camera batteries more recently, uh, but they have been doing batteries for quite a long time. They just recently branched into doing camera batteries and chargers as well. Now, their batteries are very high quality from what I've read about reviews and testing online. And they do say that they have multiple safeguards built into their batteries to protect your camera body from any kind of harm. They have overcharge, undercharge protection, short circuit protection and a bunch of other technologies that would certainly be great to have to save your camera from any potential damage. Now, their batteries are a bit more expensive with the ones for my X-T4 being $45 a piece and the charger, which is sold separately, being priced at $35. But again, as I've said, I've heard nothing but good things about their batteries from other photographers that have used them, and they do have a lot of really good non-sponsored reviews online that you can find for yourself. So I just wanted to share them as well. They're not as inexpensive as the first two companies, which I do have personal experience with, but they are still, for the most part, cheaper than a lot of your OEM batteries. Now, I can't say they're definitely cheaper than Fuji because I'm not 100% certain, but I think a genuine Fuji battery for the X-T4 is about $45 as well. So they're about the same price as Fuji. Um, So take that as you will. Just sharing some information that could potentially save you some money when it comes to buying quality third-party batteries for your cameras. Now, the second area where you can save money that I wanted to talk to or talk about on today's show and save money on your photo gear is third-party glass. Now, I've talked about third-party glass before, And as you already know, your camera maker does offer great glass as well as less expensive entry level glass or consumer glass for your camera. But if you want better quality glass for less money, what do you do then? Well, there are some options for you here as well, and a few that I can personally recommend from my own personal use and ownership. Now, Sigma is a third-party lens maker that's been around since 1961, and they make photography and cinematography-related products. And they make all of their products at their factory in Japan, the same home country as many of the camera makers. Now, I can share that some of the early Sigma lenses that I owned for my Canon bodies were subpar in performance and image quality. But their newest stuff, and especially their art series of lenses, are top-notch. Sigma offers a contemporary line, which is their more consumer-priced lenses, their sport line, which is for fast-action sports, their F2.8 lenses, stuff like that, their telephoto zooms, and then they have their art line of lenses, and these all fall at various price points, and of course, their art series is very similar in quality, image quality, to the Canon L series of glass or your Sony G Master line. Now, to give you an idea, just one example, a Sigma Art 35mm f1.4 lens in the Canon EF mount is $800, compared to Canon's 35mm f1.2 L, which sells for two to $3,000, so quite a huge difference in price and only a small difference in the widest aperture capability of f1.2 to f1.4. So not a significant amount of difference in light gathering capabilities. Either lens would be great for low light performance. Now, I personally know a lot of photographers who really love their Sigma art glass, as well as quite a few that love Sigma's sport glass line as well for shooting baseball, football, soccer, and even basketball. Now, Sigma does also make their own camera bodies, which you might not have known about. And although they've gotten pretty good reviews, I've always preferred to stick with a brand that has been making camera bodies for quite a few decades, or in the case of Canon and Nikon, over a century. Now, the next 
Third party lens maker I wanted to tell you about, if you didn't already know about them, is Tamron. And they're another Japanese lens maker that has been in business since 1950. Now, they make lenses like Sigma does for most any camera mount out there. And I've had a really good experience with Tamron lenses over the years on my Canon bodies. Now, I do admit I don't have any experience with their Fujifilm lenses as they just recently started making X-mount glass. But from the posts I've read and the image samples I've seen in some of the Fujifilm groups that I'm in, Tamron makes great glass for Fujifilm now as well. They do currently have three lenses on the market. They have a 17 to 70 f2.8. They have an 18 to 300, and they also now have a 150 to 500, which are some pretty good offerings in the Fujifilm X mount. Now, like Sigma, Tamron makes different levels of glass at different price points and with differences in performance and image quality. Tamron also offers both full frame and crop body glass as well if you're shooting for Canon or with Canon or Nikon. So you have they have you covered pretty much no matter what body you own. And I do want to share that their latest G2 series of lenses have very high praises and reviews from multiple reputable, reputable photography sources, including DP Review TV. And I do have a lot of respect for Chris Chris and Jordan at DP Review TV. Those guys are great, and they do put out very good, high-quality reviews and videos. Now, to give you a comparison in price, Tamron is releasing the 150 to 500 lens for the X mount for $1,500, where the more uh, the new recently released XF 150 to 600 from Fujifilm is $2,000. So if you don't need the extra 100 millimeters of reach, you can save 500 bucks by getting the Tamron lens. And the Tamron does have weather sealing as well, just like the Fujifilm does. Now, the other big difference is the Tamron is an F5 to an F67 lens, where the Fujifilm is an F5.6 to F8. So with the Tamron, you're also getting a little more light gathering capabilities. And that Tamron lens does also have an aperture ring that I know most Fujifilm shooters love to have on their lenses. And I do myself. I I won't deny that I do just love the feel of that aperture ring when I'm out shooting with my Fujifilm bodies and lenses. So definitely something, I don't know, I guess it's a nostalgia thing. Now, there are some other third-party lens companies out there that are doing some really great stuff, but I will wait and talk more about them in another episode. Uh, So if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher so you don't miss a single episode, and you can even go back and listen to the entire catalog. Uh, As of this episode today, I have 276 episodes total in the catalog, so there is plenty for you to listen to when you have your free time on your drive back and forth to work or when you're just relaxing at home, doing housework or chores around the house or whatever the case may be. Or maybe the next time you're traveling out of state to visit family and friends like Tina and I frequently do, you can throw on the show and just listen to the back catalog of episodes so you can get an idea of all of the things I've talked about up to this point on this show, which is about four years old now. All right, that is going to wrap up this episode. Remember to check out the Liam Photography Podcast Facebook group. It is a private group, and you must answer a security question to join, which is the name of the host of the show, myself, Liam. And I've also opened it up to allow you to give the name of a previous guest on the show to show that you are a listener. Once you're in the group, you are free to post your own original work. I'm also the admin of the Fujifilm GFX 50R group, which is the largest group for the 50R on Facebook. If you own or plan to own the 50R, you can request to join that group, but you do have to answer two security questions to join that group. You can find my work at liamphotography.net and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at liamphotoatl. If you like abandoned buildings and history, you can find my projects at forgottenpiecesofgeorgia.com and forgottenpiecesofpennsylvania.com.
All right, that's going to wrap up episode 276 of the Liam Photography Podcast. I want to thank all of my listeners once again for subscribing, rating, and reviewing in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you might be getting your podcast. Also wanted to remind you to stop by the Liam Photography YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, watch the videos, like them, comment on them, share them out on social media. And hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes drop. And also be sure to enter the latest giveaway that the show is doing, where I will be the show will be giving away a Go Groove camera backpack. You can find the link to enter the contest in today's episode's show notes, as well as the show notes for the last few episodes. And that contest will be wrapping up next month in October. So make sure you get your entries in as soon as possible. All right, that's going to wrap this one up. I will see you all again on Sunday.